continues now. If you ask most hunters, they will probably say they'd like to see more elk where they hunt. But the Idaho Department of Fish and Game says one region has too many. Steve Liebenthal has the story in tonight's Idaho Backroads. These elk grazing just north of Mountain Home are part of a population that fish and game managers say has grown too large. We're talking uh, almost 3,000 elk above um, our top end of the objective. So why is that a problem? Depredation. The growing population has created problems, mostly for farmers. And when deer, pronghorn, antelope, or elk damage crops, hunters and anglers pay the price. In 1990, the Idaho legislature mandated that fish and game compensate farmers for damage, and two summers ago, that compensation went through the roof. The farmland here in Elmore County is now covered with snow, and elk have moved to lower elevation to spend the winter. But in the summer of 2018, those elk found something they liked here organic potatoes. And a farmer growing those potatoes said those elk did more than $1 million worth of damage to his crops. He made a claim and Fish and Game paid him off. Yeah, we came up with a claim of $1.2 million uh, in loss um, to that farmer's crop. That money came from an account funded by various fees paid by hunters and anglers. Every deer and elk permit includes a fee for depredation. And in May of 2017, with depredation payouts increasing, the legislature approved another fee, a $5 access depredation fee to pay private landowners who allow access to their land and to pay farmers like Don McFarland when big game animals damage their crops. Fishing Game also started a research project with the University of Idaho, hoping to find effective ways to reduce crop damage. And last week, that project created an internet furor when photos of butchered elk appeared on Facebook. As part of the research project, Fish and Game sharpshooters dispatched at night when elk were moving into farmland to feed. The sharpshooters killed 206 elk, mostly in the Magic Valley region. We have employed uh, department sharpshooters to try to implement uh, that component um, by removing a small number of elk um, at a time to try to teach those elk to not come into the crops. So if the farms weren't there, would the ecosystem support the elk population? Yeah, probably. Um, but that's also like saying if, if Twin Falls wasn't there, would we have more wildlife? Probably. And what about the meat from those 206 elk? A Facebook post by Idaho for Wildlife initially claimed that because many of the elk were taken in summer, the meat rotted. Now that couldn't be further from the truth. McDonald says those elk were immediately field dressed, placed in a refrigerated truck and taken to a meat processor where they were butchered and distributed to nine food banks. Idaho for Wildlife has now removed that claim from their post. The U of I research project tested three other methods of keeping elk off farmland, fencing, spraying crops to make them taste bad, and using hounds. Managers are also looking to hunters to reduce elk numbers in the Magic Valley region. Last year, they nearly doubled the number of elk permits available in the Smoky Bennett zone, where they say elk are doing the most damage to crops. What we were targeting is trying to kill a thousand elk a year for two years. With the deadline for mandatory hunter reports approaching, McDonald says he hopes to get a handle on whether that happened last fall. As for the U of I study, he says results from that should be available in late spring. Steve Liebenthal. Last year, Governor Brad Little signed into law legislation that limits the amount paid for any single depredation claim to 10% of the money in the expandable big game depredation trust account. Coming up next.